What am I even saying right now? What am I even, what am I even talking about? Hi guys, Ross here. Welcome back to another video. So, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this kind of ball spawning effect within Cinema 4D. And I got the idea for this from an animation that I saw from a really talented designer called Alvaro Navarro. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, but I'm just going to play the animation and you guys can get a look at what we're going to be looking at recreating today. Nice. So it's a really cool animation. Like I said, if you haven't checked out this guy, uh, here's his Instagram. I'll drop it in the description as well. Go check him out. He's a really talented dude. So this is the particular scene we're going to be looking at today. It's this part here where the balls are spawning. I'm just going to turn off the sound here. I think there's... Yeah, so it's just looking at how these kind of balls spawn. So let's jump straight into cinema and show you how it's done. So... I'm going to start off with creating the container for these spheres to spawning. So I'm just going to grab a cube and I'm going to press C to make this editable. Now, what that's going to do is let us uh, select the different faces of our object. And what we want to do is select the top and delete it. So you can do that just by going to polygon mode here on the left hand side, selecting the face and then pressing delete. And now we have this open box for our balls to spawning. Okay. So I'm going to come back to object mode here and I just want to adjust the size of this. So if I press T on my keyboard, that's going to bring up my scale tool or you can select it on the top here on the toolbar. And I'm just going to increase the width of this, increase the depth. And then if I just click and drag somewhere on the screen, that's just going to uniformly scale it down. So cool. Now we have this small little rectangular box and I'm just going to hit this button here, which is drop to floor. Uh, this is a really neat plugin that I've used for ages now. I'll drop that in the description as well. Uh, really, really helpful just for getting it to drop to the floor. You guys probably knew that by the name, but yeah. Um, okay, cool. So we've got our container. I'm just going to hide that a second. And what we need to do now is actually create the emitter so that we can spawn these balls. So what we need to do is go to simulate particles and then emitter. So if I select this and just hit play quickly, you can see how it's shooting out these different lines here. And what we need to do is change those from those lines to our spheres. So I just want to set this up quickly so that it's all pointing in the right direction and it's the right size. I'm trying to scale this cube up a little bit first of all. So I'm going to select the emitter, hit R for rotate and then hold shift and just click and drag. And that's going to allow me to rotate this in increments of 10. So now we've got it at 90 degrees. And I'm just going to go over to my four windows and just move this down so that it's just above the bottom of the box. And if I then select emitter, go to emitter, I can then change the size of this. So I'm just going to have it so that it fits the uh, width of it, the width and the depth. Now, if I just go back to the timeline back at the start of the timeline and play it again you can now see we've got those lines shooting up so all we have to do to populate this with our sphere is come up grab a sphere and then just make this a child of the emitter now if we play it you can see nothing's happening we've still got those lines and that's because we need to click this one button within the emitter called show objects if we play it now you can see we've got all these spheres spawning and they're shooting upwards at the moment, they're a bit big, so what I'm going to do is decrease these to about 12 centimeters, maybe. Yeah, that looks like a good size. And I'm just going to leave them at segments of 24 just to keep the viewport a bit speedy, but you would want to probably increase these uh, maybe to like 100 or put them in a subdiv uh, subdivision surface just to smooth them out a little bit. I'm going to leave them like they are for now, like I said, just to keep the viewport speedy. And if we play it now, you can see at the moment no dynamics are happening they're flying up they're even intersecting with the cube and that's not what we want so the first thing we need to do is come up to our emitter and we need to add some dynamics to this so we can do that by right clicking going to simulation and adding a rigid body if we play this back now i'm just going to zoom out quickly you can see the particles falling so the actual emitter is 
behaving correctly. Um, it's being affected by gravity, which is what we want to happen to the spheres and not the emitter. We want the emitter to stay in the same spot, but we want the spheres to drop and stay within the cube. So we can fix this by going up to the rigid body tag, going to collision and where it says inherit tag, we just want to apply tag to children. So now that should be affecting the sphere. But you can see individual elements is turned off. So because we've only got one object in there, we can select all. But if you had multiple, you might want to select top level or second level. So I'll just leave on all for now. And if we play this through, you can see now the spheres are dropping. So they're behaving correctly. They're being affected by gravity. So the next thing we need to do is make our cube an actual collider or a container for our spheres. So just like we did with the emitter, we're going to right click, go to simulation tags. But for this one, we want to get a collider body because our spheres are going to be colliding with the cube. So if we play this back now, I'm just going to set this cube to x-ray so we can see through it. If we play this back. The spheres are trying to stay in there. You can see they're kind of shooting all over the place. So they're trying to interact with the cube, but it's just not working. So all we have to do to fix this is come up to our collider tag on our cube and where it says shape under the collision menu, we just want to change that to static mesh. And what that's doing is telling Cinema that this is an object that is staying still. And that's going to allow Cinema to give it more accurate results and keep the spheres within the container. So. If we play this back now, you can see the spheres are working exactly like we wanted them to. So you can see we've got a few bouncing around. I'm just going to increase this timeline to about 180, just so we can see them spawn for a bit longer. And with dynamics, whenever you want to see a change, so say I've updated this, um, I've updated the bounce or the friction or whatever. If I want to see that update, I have to go back to the beginning of the timeline. And so just keep that in mind whenever you're changing anything, that you just want to go back to the beginning and replay it. So our spheres are working. Uh, now it's just a case of going into the emitter and playing with some of the settings. So I'm gonna hide this cube by clicking this top dot twice. And that basically is affecting how the cube is being previewed within the viewport. So when it's red, that means it's not gonna be previewed. And if you wanted the same in the render as well, just make sure you've got that selected to red as well. Okay, cool. So. We've got our spheres spawning, but we want them to spawn more frequently. So all we have to do for that is go to the emitter and you can see we've got a bunch of settings here, but what we want is the birth rate editor. So if I change this to hundred, for example, and again, going back to the beginning of the timeline, playing this, you can now see how we're getting much more of them to spawn and they're stacking up a lot quicker. They're starting to overflow actually over the edge of that cube. So what that's doing is just increasing the amount that they are spawning. I don't know uh, in particular what that number relates to. If it's 10 per frame, for example, all I know is that the more you increase it, the more we're going to spawn. We've got the birth rate editor set to 100, but we want to make sure that the renderer is the same because if we had 100 in the editor, but only 10 in the renderer, that means there's only going to be a rate of 10 spawning when we come to finally render this out. So just make sure you have those set as the same. Um, the reason why they built it like this is because say you wanted a thousand to spawn, right? I don't think a machine would be able to handle a thousand spawning. I'm not going to try it because I think it probably would crash my cinema. Um, so what you would do is probably keep this at a hundred, but then know that a thousand are going to spawn in the final uh, render so that you can preview it in the viewport quicker, but the final thing has more of those spawning. So, okay, cool. So we've got a lot more spawning now and let's just go through these settings. So we've got the start and stop emission and that's basically like the start and stop of the animation. So if I set the start to 20 frames and then the end to 40, we're gonna start the spawning at 20 frames and then stop it at 40. So now we've got just a short burst of them spawning and we could have them start at zero and then stop at like 10 or stop at not 1, 10. So just after 10 frames, they're going to stop spawning. So you can play with that if you only wanted a few to spawn. And if we come down, we have a lifetime. So that's kind of similar, but that's not the actual uh, spawning of the particles. It's how long the objects or the particles or whatever are going to stay there for. So at the moment, we got 600 frames. But if I turn that to 10, 
after 10 frames, they're going to start to disappear. So our actual spawning of particles is going to last for 180 frames, but the actual objects themselves are only staying there for 10 frames. So that's quite a cool effect. You could create some like air bubbles or something. Um, but yeah, so you can play with that. And then next to we have a variation. So if I added uh, a 50% variation and let's just change that to 20. So basically it's gonna add a 50% variation either side of that 20 frames that we've set. So some are gonna start to disappear earlier and some are gonna disappear later. So you can play with that variation just to give it a more natural and organic look. Uh, I'm gonna keep the lifeline at what it was, 600 frames. And then we come down to speed. Now, if I just turn off the show objects quickly, just to give you a better representation of how this works. If we play it back now, the speed is set to 150 centimeters. So that's how quickly these are traveling. If I change that down to like 10, you can see how much slower those particles are spawning now. And because we've got them so tightly packed, it's not going to make too much of a difference um, because they're so tightly compact to each other. Uh, but you can play with that speed um, depending on your scene just to kind of tweak the look of it. So I'm going to keep that at whatever it was, which I think was a 150. Again, you can add variation to this and you can do that with all of these settings that I'm talking about. Rotation, um, obviously it's just going to add some rotation to the particles when they spawn. So let me just change the emitter to a cube really quickly. So I'm going to scale that down and make that a child of that and just hide the spheres. Okay, so we have all our cubes spawning, okay, and they're going all over the place. If I add some rotation to this, so let's say 45 degrees, when they spawn, some of them are spawning at a different angle, and that just helps to give it, again, a more organic and natural look to it. So in the reference, for example, um, his spheres have got a logo on them, so you would want to add some rotation so that not all of them were facing the same direction when they spawned. That's just going to make it a little bit more realistic. So I'm just going to delete that cube, go back to the trusty old spheres and just reset that. Cool. And then finally, we have our end scale. So just like the life, it kind of works in conjunction with the lifeline. So say I had this set to uh, 50 frames, right? And then we have the end scale set to zero. As it approaches that end of its life, it's going to decrease to an end scale of zero. So if I play this, you can see how the spheres are starting to shrink as they come to the end of their lifetime. Um, again, you have variation for this, so I could add 50% variation. So some will get smaller quicker, some won't get all the way down to zero. Um, so again, you can just help add some uh, variation to that. So that's pretty much all the settings that you are going to play with within this um, emitter. And the next thing we want to look at is if we just watch the video again quickly, you can see how they were all sticking to each other. Whereas ours, if I just um, set that back to zero, I'll set that back to one, sorry. Uh, ours are starting to, they're kind of like flying all over the place a little bit. And what we can do to fix that is come into our simulate particles and then we have these extra effects here. So the one that we're looking for is friction. So I'm just going to select that and let's replay this. And you can't see too much of a difference, but if I set this to 100% and replay this, you can see how all the spheres are sticking to each other and that's because it's creating friction between each of them. So when they spawn, they're sticking to the object next to them as opposed to just flying off and out of the cube uh, like they did without that friction. So you can use some of these simulate effects to add some interesting um, results to your emitter. So I'm just going to select the emitter, uh, come up to simulate and let's add a wind, for example. I'm just going to move that to the left hand side rotate it holding shift and you can see which way it's facing because of the arrow and if i just play this back i'm going to increase the wind speed to like 50 centimeters for example you can see how it's starting to push those to the right hand side and as they flow over the cube you can see how they start to move to the right let's just increase that uh lifetime up to back to 600 
and replay that. So as they start to spill out over the cube, you can see how they're kind of flying over the edge and that's because of this wind. So I could really crank this up to like 200 centimeters and replay this. And you can see it's just pushing them all up against the right hand side wall. So you can play with those different um, particle effects just to get some interesting results. Cool, so this is our final result and obviously you could frame a camera so that you only see the balls. So let me just get a camera, make this like a super telly lens, zoom out, make sure all these are set to zero. So we're looking at it front on. Zoom out a bit. And now we have this cool stacking effect. Okay, so say you're done with your simulation, right? You've got it, it's spawning the balls, you're happy with it, but now you're ready to light and texture it, but you don't want it to be so slow in the viewport. Um, what you can do is actually come up to your simulation tag, your dynamics body tag on your emitter, go to cache and then select bake all. And that's just gonna do this little process here. And basically what it's doing is it's taking that simulation so that it doesn't have to re-simulate it every time it's always going to do that fixed version and that just makes it a lot quicker for cinema to preview now that does mean though if you tweak any of these settings it's not going to change it because it's fixed at all these previous settings that you had when you baked the simulation so if you wanted to unbake it adjust it a little bit all you have to do is go to clear object cache go back into your emitter change what you need to change or change in your dynamics tag and just rebake it when you're done. And you can tell it's baked because now the icon has changed to this little one here. Um, but yeah, that's how you can just speed up the viewport a little bit. It's still probably gonna be a little bit slow, but it'll be a whole lot faster than um, having to re-simulate it every time you decide to preview. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Uh, if you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you wanna see more content like this, hit that subscribe button too. I would really, really appreciate it. And I haven't touched on lighting in this video, but um, I'm gonna make a separate video on that. So hopefully that'll be out soon, guys. And we'll just kind of look at how you can light a scene like this, maybe not this scene specifically, but um, just lighting in general. And then I'm thinking about doing a texturing video as well. So hopefully those kind of combination of things will help you to improve your renders as well as creating cool effects like this. So thanks for watching, guys. I will catch you in the next video. Peace.